Good morning, one and all. Uh, thanks to Sages for this opportunity. My, I'm, I'm Dr. Praveen Raj, and I'll be talking on a quite a controversial topic, laparoscopic intraperitoneal only mesh repair along with clean contaminated procedures. I have no disclosures. This is quite controversial because people around the globe, although there are evidences that say, yes, you can combine a mesh repair along with clean, clean contaminated operations, there's still been a contra controversy. This is one of the very recent study that was published. Although we are not doing it, there isn't, there isn't multi, uh, enough data that actually says it is bad. Probably this is one among that. This study concluded that combining a ventral hernia repair along with the laparoscopic cholecystectomy increases pulmonary complications. But going into the study, it was not comparable. There were more patients who were in the ASA class three and more were diabetic. And the study had few limitations in the sense they were not sure how many patients actually had a mesh repair. But more importantly, there was no mesh infection when the mesh was combined along with the laparoscopic cholecystectomy. Some background literature. We all know laparoscopic intraperitoneal onlay mesh has much shorter hospital stay, better recovery, reduced complications, although pain is a controversial entity. Similar or even better recurrences at certain, certain situations. And the advantage of laparoscopy is that you can combine surgeries or pathologies or two or three different quadrants of the abdomen through the same excess. But what are we going to do when the patient requires a simultaneous gallbladder removal or a hysterectomy? Or probably there was just a presentation in the morning where they said they had to combine a hernia repair with bariatric surgery, so instead they did a gastric imbrication. So we're trying to change away from our usual pathways. I think there are four options. First is probably, I would call it the pathology first approach, that is handling the gallbladder or the hysterectomy or doing the bariatric surgery first, wait for some time, then do your second surgery. But there was a report that I et al. group had shown 33% of patients can have obstruction, especially in the background of obesity in the waiting period. You require two operations, two an anesthesia, nobody knows what is the interval period when you can safely get back. Or probably handling the hernia first. But after you have done the hernia, especially it's an intraperitoneal onlay mesh, the second surgery is not going to be easy. And what are we going to do if the patient is going to develop a complication in this interval period, like an acute cholangitis, are we going, or an acute, acute cholecystitis, are we going to remove this mesh? And increasing chance of recurrence in the waiting period because obesity is a predisposing factor which we have not yet handled or probably simultaneous repair in the form of a biological mesh, but the, dura but the durability is questionable. And with the number of um, incisional hernias or ventral hernias increasing in obesity, I think that's not the mesh of standard of choice. Then the last option would be a simultaneous repair with a composite mesh. I think safety has been the biggest concern for all of us, especially from the context of a mesh infection. And it's a single operation, it's going to be durable, and there is no interval period. So we've been doing this day in and day out from our institute for many years. I did not know how we started doing this, but we've been safely doing it. So I didn't want to analyze how we started. I just wanted to get back onto the records of how are these patients are actually been doing that we've been doing at our institute. So I did a retrospective analysis of all patients who received intraperitoneal onlay mesh. And I included only those repairs where a cholecystectomy and hysterectomy were done. The bariatric surgery were excluded because I've already published the data very recently last year. Technique, we usually use the ep epigastric technique. We always remove the sac as when possible. The midline defects are closed, that is the medialization of the rectus. And the mesh is fixed with the transphagial or intracorporeal suture. <coughs> this is the same technique that our institute has published way back. Coming on to the results, there were 256 patients who had received concomitant repairs, 120 for laparoscopic lap coles, and 126 for hysterectomy, and none of them had a mesh repair for malignancy or endometriosis. That, that was something good. And I could trace back retrospectively, 86% of patients were traceable, and all these patients had either received a proceed or a prior to mesh from Ethicon and Covidon res respectively. The results, there were no conversions. The operating time of group one was 136 minutes average and 2.7 days hospital stay. The group, group two, that is hysterectomy group, was 224 minutes and 4.3 days hospital stay. 14% of patients had a seroma, 6.5% of those required aspiration, and four patients required more than two aspirations. There was two mesh infections, which was about 0.8%. 
these patients did not actually have a serum on the post-op setting, and they developed on the second or the third month post-operatively, the meshes had to be removed, and later we had to do an open repair. There were two recurrences, one in either groups, which totally amounts to 0.8 percentage. The discussion part. I think the ad advantages we all know. If we could do it, it's a single operation. You keep a durable mesh. There's no interval period. But the safety has always been the concern for us. That's why most of surgeons are actually not doing it. But there is enough and more data, this we all know, that meshes can be safely combined even in the, in the presence of an open bowel. That's what we do in probably a parastomal hernia repair. There's a bowel in there, but then still we go to doing the mesh. And this is our own data that we published last year. Concomitant ventral hernia repair, this is in the background of sleeve gastrectomies and even gastric bypasses. Composite meshes were placed. There was no single mesh infection of 35 patients. We have done 45 patients as of now. The recurrence rates of this study was actually lesser compared to the other groups. The mesh infection rates were similar compared to the other series that had only the only mesh repairs done. The seromers were also comparable. The hospital stay was not more when we had combined this along with the ventral hernia repair. So to conclude, if you believe it is possible, there is an advantage of a single stage operation. There's no interval period where complications of either the hernia or the other pathologies could actually develop. So we are reducing the recurrence rates and the complications by avoiding the interval period. But the cautious thing is, when in doubt, when you have a bile spillage, avoid your mesh. It's not like you go in for all patients and keep your meshes. If you're confident, yes, I can keep on this patient, but any single doubt on your mind, just don't keep a mesh. Because having a mesh infection is much more dreadful than having a recurrence. And I think initially it should be started with centers with adequate experience of handling either of the surgeries before we start combining it. To start with, proper informed consents from the patient have to be got, and the literature support has to be discussed with the patients. Thank you all for your patience as well. Thank you for that interesting paper. Questions? Yes. Amir Sold from Tel Aviv. Uh, I'm a little confused. First of all, it's a great paper, but your message is confusing. First of all, you say it's safe, and then you say it when in doubt, don't put a mesh in. So when is the cut line? When, 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 when do you decide? How do you decide? Okay. So the point is, yes, we can save because this is a retrospective study. Because what we generally do, the institution's protocol, when we go in with the mindset, we take the consent, we're going to combine the repair. But suppose there is going to be a bile spillage where we see signs of some infection, it is better we stay off. It's not like you go in for all patients, keep in a mesh for all patients, where we are planning to do a mesh, a mesh repair. It can be done safely, but when in doubt, we need to stop doing it. Because that is a message for the younger surgeons. This paper should not be taken as an evidence to say, yes, I'm going to start combining mesh repair for all my cholecystectomies. Well, that's that should not be so. Yes, no, it should not be taken like that. It can be safely done. Because most people, when most of the surgeons where I've discussed, I've, I've been speaking to, even in a straightforward call, a gallbladder removal with the hernia, people do not come in at all. Because they say this is a clean, this is actually as per the classification, it's a clean contaminated surgery, so I'm not going to be doing it. So never say blindly no, or blindly get and say yes. I think that's why I said centers with adequate experience where they can rightly choose a patient, it has to be combined. I'm just trying to say it can safely be done. So don't blindly say no. Dr. Demista. It's an interesting paper, but I think you should bear in mind it's a relatively small series. I'm surprised you didn't mention, I believe it was the paper by Coe in Annals of Surgery, NISQIP analysis of over 30,000 cases suggesting that a clean contaminated case is a relative contraindication to use a synthetic mesh. I'm not sure of the paper, but I think I retrospectively analyzed uh, thousands of patients were actually done. This 256 patients that had a combined repair, I think probably is one of the largest series. Thank you for that interesting paper and discussion. Thank you.